Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you. Hi, everybody, welcome again. Let's see, uh, tonight we have Rodrigo Daniel, Sulma Beatriz, and Rebecca Estefania. Okay, welcome. We have to start now because it's eight o'clock and we always begin on time. So let me share the screen with you. Okay, can you see the screen I'm sharing? Hello? Yes, can you? Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so everybody, my three students right now, welcome. This is Inglés Intermedio, Modulo 3, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. It's Intermediate 3, Session 11, and today is September 22nd, 2022, or 2022, as you prefer. So what are we going to do today? Well, we need to continue the topic we started, well, like two days ago, not yesterday, <laughs> two days ago. And that topic was uh, models, okay? So today we continue with the models. So the lesson objectives, the first one is here. In this class, you will listen, practice, and learn about body language using models and adverbs. This is a continuation of the topic we started a couple of days ago. So let's continue. If you remember, uh, which models were we studying? ¿Cuáles models estábamos estudiando? Mm -hmm. Might and may. Might and may, very good. And uh, what do we use might and may for? ¿Para qué los ocupamos? What do we use might and may for? To say something possible. To say that something is possible. Very good. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, that's right. We use may and might to express that something is possible. And that's what we studied yesterday and the day before. Now, today, we have something else. We have may, might, and could. This is something else. Now, take a look at this. Could is similar to may and might, all right? Similar to may and might. And we have an example. I need a volunteer. Who can help me read the, the example? Please, I need a volunteer to read this example. Rebecca. It's a strange story, but it could be true. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a strange story, but it could be true. Could, again, is similar to may and might. In other words, could expresses a possibility, something that is possible, okay? Now, you can also say it's a strange story, but it may be true, and it's okay. You can also say it's a strange story, but it might be true, and it's also okay. So you can choose, you can use may, you can use might, you can use could, all right? One thing about could is uh, pronunciation. It can be a little bit tricky. Take a look. When you have could, I'm going to type it in here. The L in the word is silent. So you don't say could, you don't pronounce the L. Okay, this is a silent letter. You only say could, could. So basically the O and the L are silent. You just pronounce the C, you pronounce the U, and you pronounce the D. So the pronunciation is could, only could. But remember, the L is silent. You don't pronounce could. No, you say could. That's the right pronunciation. So again, we use may, might, and could to talk about something that is possible, okay? 
could is similar to may and might. Now, we use could to say that something is possible now or in the future, all right? I have two more examples. I need two volunteers to read this, please. Who wants to participate? Let's read the example, Ciro. The first example, please, over here. Okay, the story could be true, but I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You say, <clears throat> the story could be true. Maybe it's true, but I don't think it is. Personally, I don't believe it, okay? The story could be true, but I don't think it is. Thank you very much. One more volunteer to read the next example, please. Who wants to participate? Practice your pronunciation and intonation. Jessica, thank you. I don't know what time Lisa is coming. She's called get here high anytime. Okay. Uh, pronunciation. She could. She could get here at any time. Thank you. Uh, the example reads, I don't know what time Lisa is coming. I don't know. She could get here at any time. Podría llegar en cualquier momento. Okay. That's the idea. Because could expresses something that is possible. Similar to might and may. All right. That's the thing. Before we continue, do you have any questions about this? Is everything clear? Everything clear. Everything is clear. Okay, perfect. Just remember, could is similar to may and might, and it expresses that something is possible. So what are we going to do here? There is the first exercise today. Take a look. Your turn. Complete the sentences, choose from. Could be, then you have uh, could be again, could fall, could come, could sleep. We're going to do this exercise together because it's very simple and it's just uh, five items. So uh, we're not going to work in the breakout rooms, not for this exercise, but we're going to do it for the ones that follow this one. So the first one goes, are you tired? I need a volunteer for the first one, please. Raise your hand. Who wants to participate? Rebecca, are you tired? Yes, very tired. I feel as if I could sleep for a week. I feel as if I could sleep for a week. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, thank you. What about number two? I need a volunteer, please. Volunteer, number two, please. Sin miedo, vamos. Navy, should I open this letter? Yes, please eat. Could be important. Yes, please. It could be important. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's right. It could be important. That means it's possible that the letter is important. So open it. Thank you, Nady. Number three, a volunteer, please. Who wants to try? Let's try. Let's do it. Ciro, where should we meet tomorrow? Well, I, I could be to your office if you like. Could be to your office if you like. Mm, not really, Ciro, but I will give you a second opportunity. Okay. Well, Please. I could, I could come uh -huh. to your office if you like. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, I could come to your office if you like. You are expressing a possibility. But maybe, I mean, we could go to a restaurant or we could meet in a mall. Do you prefer? 
So that's the thing. Thank you, Ciro. That's the correct answer. Very good. What about number four? Volunteer, please. Raise your hand and participate. Let's do it. Who wants to try? Josue. And then Rodrigo will have number five. So Josue, where did you put the remote control? I don't remember. It could fall anywhere. It could fall anywhere. Mm, actually, it's a different answer. I'm going to give you a second opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't remember. It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. Podría estar en cualquier lugar, right? Correct. So where did you put the remote control? I don't remember. It could be anywhere. All right. Rodrigo, do you have number five? Rodrigo Antonio, sí, you wanted uh, to participate? Don't run around the pool. Why? Why? You could fall and drown. You could fall and drown. Podrías caerte y ahogarte. Okay, that's right. Don't run around the pool. Why? You could fall and drown. Okay, thank you very much. That's the right answer. Okay, how many people do we have? We have Nady, Rodrigo, Rebecca, Josue, Ciro, Zulma, Mr. Perla, Rodrigo Daniel, Jessica Rosales, Diego Anthony, Maria Ayala, and Sandra Patricia. Okay, a lot of people. Very good. All right, let's continue. That's the part. Just, just remember, right? We use may, might, and could in very similar ways. We use could to express that something is possible. True story. So let's continue. What about this? Now, this is new. Must and can't. Okay? Must and can't. There is an example conversation. I need one boy and one girl to help me read it, please. I need two volunteers this time. Raise your hand, please. Ciro, okay, you will be the boy right here. Now a lady, please, who wants to read the other part. My house near the highway. Ah, but that's the lady's part. <laughs> you have to read this yeah. part. Okay, Sandra, Sandra is going to help you. Okay, Sandra, you read this okay. and Ciro, you read this. Okay. Sandra? Uh, it must be very nice. No, it's actually the other way around. <laughs> it's al revés, pero. Uh, uh, uh -huh. my, my, sorry, sorry. It's okay. My house is, my house is near the highway. Uh huh. It must be very noisy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, she says, my house is near the highway. And he says, it must be very noisy. Okay. Must. Must is another modal auxiliary verb. All right. And we use must to say that we believe something is certain. Something is true. In other words, we use must when we believe or when we are sure about something, okay? It's like we are 99.9% .9 sure about something. Okay, so we use must, again, when we are 99, say 0.9% sure about something. Okay, in this case, this is not a possibility. You are certain. Estás seguro o segura, verdad? Que así debe ser. So she says, my house is near the highway. And he says, it must be very noisy. Debe ser muy ruidoso. Ahí. Todos los carros pasan y pasan y pasan. So we use must to say that we believe something is certain. Okay. Volunteer, please, to read the next example. I need a volunteer. Let's participate. Let's practice our pronunciation. Sulma, first example. You have been traveling all day. You must be tired. 
Tired, yes. You have been traveling all day. You must be tired. ¿Eh? Todo el, he estado viajando todo el día. Debes estar cansado. Claro, es lo más seguro, ¿verdad? Si alguien viaja todo el día, mal está cansado. So, you have been traveling all day. You must be tired. Okay? Very good. I need two volunteers now to read the next example. Please. Two volunteers. Ciro, and uh, I need one more. Mm -hmm. Who else? One more person, please. Okay, okay, Rebecca. Okay, Ciro, you begin. And Rebecca, you read the second line. I read this, this, this sentence. Uh, this one, Joe. Okay, Joe, Joe is a hard worker. Mm -hmm. Rebecca? Joe, you must be joking. He doesn't do anything. Aha, uh -huh. that's right. Thank you. Joe is a hard worker. That's un trabajador muy entregado. Trabaja duro. So, Joe is a hard worker. And the other person says, Joe, you must be joking. He doesn't do anything. Tienes que estar bromeando, dice, si no hace nada, tipo. So, you must be joking. He doesn't do anything. And the last one, I'm going to read it. Laura must get very bored in her job. She does the same thing every day. Okay? So, if you notice, must because it's a model auxiliary, follows the two rules that we have been talking about in the last two lessons. Okay, first, it doesn't have a special form for he, she, it. Si se fijan, no tiene una forma especial para he, she, it. Aquí lo podemos ver. Dice, Laura must. No le ponemos una S al must, porque no tiene formas especiales para he, she, it. Y lo segundo, Es que el verbo que le sigue siempre va a estar en forma base. Must be, must get. All right? Always the base form. Laura must get very bored in her job. She does, she does the same thing every day. Okay, so that's the first part with must. Do you understand? Yes, no. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, yes. good. <laughs> okay, tengo que estar seguro. ¿no? Okay, but what about can't? We use can't to say that we believe something is not possible. Can't is the opposite of must. Okay, it's the opposite. Volunteer, please, I'm going to show you the first example. Who wants to read? Come on, let's participate. Sandra. Uh, you just had lunch. You can be hungry already. Already, already, already right? Already. You already. just had lunch. You can't be hungry already. Acabas de almorzar. No es posible que tengas hambre. This is the opposite of must. This is Okay, I'm going to Okay, you use must when you are 99.9% .9 sure that something is true and you use can't when you are 99.9% .9 sure that something is impossible. Okay? That's the idea. Must and can't are opposites, okay? You use can't to express that you are sure that something is impossible. No puede ser. So you use can't, like in this example. You just had lunch. You can't be hungry already. Comiste hace 10 minutos. ¿Cómo puedes tener hambre? No es posible. So you can't be hungry already. Second example. Volunteer, please. Who wants to read it?
Mm -hmm. Zero. Thank you. They haven't lived here, here, here for very long. They can know many people. That's right. Thank you. They haven't lived here for very long. They can't know many people, right? No han vivido aquí mucho tiempo. No pueden conocer a muchas personas. Apenas una semana llevan de estar acá. So they haven't lived here for very long. They can't know many people. All right. It's not possible. So the structure is, again, because must and can't are models. The subject, I, you, he, she, it, we, or they. Okay. Then you use must or you use can't. And after that, the verb in base form. Okay, you say, for example, you must be tired, you must be hungry, etc. He must be doing uh, something, he must be going to a specific place, etc. And can't is the same. You say, she can't uh, know many people, for example. So the idea is you use whatever subject you need, then you use must or can't, and after that, the verb in base form, always, because must and can't are model auxiliaries, okay? Now we're going to do an exercise. For this exercise, we're going to form uh, some groups. I have 14 participants, so we can work in pairs. I'm going to form the breakout rooms now, so you can work with a partner. Okay, room one. Jessica Rosales and Rodrigo Antonio. Room two, Diego Anthony and Mayra Portillo. Room three, Mr. Perla and Zulma Beatriz. Room four, Maritza Guadalupe, Rebecca Estefania. Room five, Josue Rivas and Nady Ibis. Room six, Maria Ayala and Rodrigo Daniel. Room seven, Ciro Mira and Sandra Patricia. I'm going to uh, start the breakout rooms now, but first I'm going to explain this. What are you going to do? It's a very easy exercise, okay? You can finish quickly. You need to complete the sentences with must or can't, okay? So what is this? Remember, you use must when you are sure that something is true. Tiene que ser así, es lo más lógico. So 99% sure that something is true. And you use can't to say the opposite when you are sure that something is impossible. It can't be true. Okay, that's the idea. So you have to complete the sentences with must or can't. And I'm going to share this via WhatsApp. Okay, I'm going to open the breakout rooms now. Everybody join your rooms. Let's do it right now. Algunos no han entrado todavía al breakout room. Por favor, entremos todos a la sala correspondiente. Ok, I'm going to join the groups now. También. It's all way full of people. Must be must must be very good. Mm -hmm. La tercera. Which one is that? Two. Number two. Okay. Yeah, correct. That restaurant must be very good. It's always full of people. Yes. ¿Cómo se pronuncia teacher? Must or must? Must. 
Mas. Mm -hmm. It's like must. Is the sound oh. uh, uh, must. Must. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to go into a different room now. Okay. En la cuatro. In the English, come on, English. <laughs> Number four. Ah. I'm sure Kate gave me her address. Dice, I. Dice, estoy, estoy seguro, seguro de que, que Kate me dio su dirección. Que me da la su dirección. Ah, tendría que ser. Uh, must, no. Must. ¿Qué quiere decir somewhere? En algún lugar. Ah, en alguna parte. Debo tenerla en alguna parte, sería mm -hmm. must have it somewhere. somewhere. Must have it somewhere. Ajá. Uh -huh. O más. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Tiene que ir más también, va otra vez. Ok. De en las cinco, I often. Sorry, I'm, I'm going into that. a different room now. Ok, please continue. Ok, ok. Thank you. You're welcome. Mil disculpas, mi audio no sirve. Lo siento. Pero le escuchamos bien ahorita. Ajá, le escuchamos. Entonces sí sirve. <ríe> uh -huh. Sí, se le, se le escuchamos bien. ¿Será que él no nos escucha? No se escucha. Él no me escucha, quizá. Hello, Mr. Perla, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Erasmo Perla, can you oh, hear me? Ok, uh, listo, hoy, hoy sí escucho, disculpen. Great. Ok, okay. ¿cómo okay. vamos? Um, you be traveling al days, you. Sería you must más, be tired. Uh -huh. You must be tired. Must be tired, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. What about number two? Eh, yo, yo pienso que igual. Okay, ¿cómo quedaría entonces? That restaurant must the restaurant. be very good. It's always full of people. It's always full of people. Very good. And number three? Mire, teacher, casi todas me han salido así más, pero no. <risa> bueno, pero no todos son. Vamos a no, ver. Uh -huh. What about number three? The, rest, the restaurant. Ahí es como siempre afirmando, ¿verdad? Uh -huh, que es pero... muy bueno. Siempre más. Ajá, pero ¿qué dice luego? Uh -huh. It's always empty. Es... Siempre está vacío, dice. Empty. empty, vacío. Ah, vacío. It's always empty. Okay. Pues no ha de ah, ser muy sí. bueno. Sí. ¿Mm? <risa> ha de ser fea sí. la comida o cobran muy caro. Ajá, entonces, ah, sí. ¿cómo quedaría ese? Eh, that eh, restaurant. It can't be very good. It's always empty. Mm -hmm. That restaurant can't be very good. It's always empty. Yeah. Por algo siempre está vacío. No puede ser muy bueno. Ajá, entonces hay que leer todito. Y si hay alguna palabra que desconocemos, busquémosla rapidito en, mm -hmm. 
en línea, <ríe> iba a decir el diccionario, pero en línea podemos buscarlo, y eso nos puede dar la clave precisamente para resolver el ejercicio. Sí, uh -huh. sí, ok, please okay. continue, Thank you. and I will go into a different room. Okay, gracias. Thank you. Welcome. Yo pienso que can not. Yo pienso que can. Eleven. Karen has, has not left the office yet. Mm. Cannot. Sería entonces. Veamos qué dice. Sí. Karen hasn't left the office yet. No ha salido o no se ha ido de la oficina todavía. Y luego dice, she, bla, 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 be working late tonight. Mm, entonces sería, she must be working late tonight. Tonight, ok. Tonight, tonight. She, she must be working late tonight. Debe estar trabajando hasta tarde hoy. Por eso no se ha ido. Ok, that's mm -hmm. right. Ok. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank Going you. into a different room. Thank you. Uh. Mm -hmm. Ahora. Mm. Con la siguiente. Nice. Um, well, habla de que llegó muy rápido, ¿verdad? English, English, sí. come on. Let's speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you arrived here very quickly. Um, it's nine. Uh, you, you are here very quickly. Mm -hmm. You, um, you, must, you, you must, you must, you must mm -hmm. very happy. You, you must, very, you have, you, you must have, have driving very fast. Very fast. Mm -hmm. You arrived here very quickly. You must have driven very fast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. I'm going to go into a different room now. See you. Yes. See you. Esta creo que es Kens. Porque dice they can, puede ser corto o poco. No sé qué quiere decir ahí. Short of money. Corto de dinero. Ah, o sea que Ajá. tiene poquito. <ríe> Entonces, es Kens. Uh -huh. <ríe> they, they can't be short of money. Bill and Sue always stay at five star hotels. Mm -hmm. They can't be short of money. Tienen dinero. <laughs> so they can't be short of money. That's right. Okay, good. I'm going to go into another room now. See you later. Okay, teach. Okay, Hello. Hello. Have you finished? Yes. Okay, good. What about number six? Can you read number six for me? Uh, six, este, quiero ver. It rainy, rain every day, do, every day during their holiday. It can't have been very nice for them. Correct. Mm -hmm. It can't have been very nice for them. Good. All right, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. See you in a minute.
ओके Okay, we're closing the breakout rooms now. Waiting 50 seconds. Twenty seconds. Okay, everybody, welcome back. I'm going to start sharing the screen. Okay. Number one, volunteer, please. I need a volunteer. Raise your hand. Maritza, then Rodrigo, number two, Sandra, number three. Maritza, Rodrigo, and Sandra. Okay, Maritza, number one. You have been traveling a day. You must be tired. You must be tired. That is correct. Okay, yeah. very good. Thank you, Maritza. What about number two, Rodrigo? That restaurant, that restaurant must be very good. It's always full of people. It's always full of people. Correct. Very good. Thank you. Sandra, number three. That restaurant can be very good. It's always empty. It's always empty. Okay, very good. Thank you, Sandra. That restaurant can't be very good. It's always empty. Great. Number four, volunteers, please. Volunteer for number four. Please, please, please. Maria Ayala. Sorry, me escucha. Sí. Yes, I can hear okay. you. I'm, I'm sure Kay gave me her address. I must have it somewhere. I must have it somewhere. Correct. Very good. I'm sure Kay gave me her address. I must have it somewhere. Thank you, Maria. How yes. about number five? Sulma. Yes. Uh, I often see that man in the street. He must live near here. He must live near here. Okay, that is correct. Thank you, Sulma. What about number six? Ciro. Okay, I, it's raining every day during their holiday. It can have been very nice for them. Correct. It rained every day during their holiday. It can't have been very nice for them. Thank you, Ciro. Number seven, volunteer, please. No sé si María Ayala quiere participar o si todavía tiene levantada la manita. Ah, perdón, 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 <laughs> no, no la había desactivado. <laughs> no problem, no hay problema, no hay problema. Perdón, Tiche. <laughs> no se preocupe, no hay ningún problema. Gracias. Yo, para que no le duela la mano. Ah, no, mentira. Ok. Sorry. It's ok. Rebeca, and then Rodrigo. Okay, Rebecca, number seven, Rodrigo, number eight. Congratulations on passing your exam. You must be very happy. You must be very happy. Yeah, Rebecca, thank you. That's correct. Rodrigo, about number eight. This bill can be correct. It's too high. This bill can't be correct. It's too high. That's right. Thank you, Rodrigo. Correct answer. This bill can't be correct. Esta cuenta no puede estar bien. Es demasiado alta. Okay, number nine, volunteer, please. Sandra. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you arrive here very quickly. You must have driven very fast. You must have driven very fast. Correct. Okay. You must have driven very fast. Thank you very much. Rodrigo wants to participate again. Number 10. Bill and Sue always stay at five-star hotels. They must be short of money. They can they can be short of money. Ah, salvada de último minuto. Yes, they can't be short of money. Correct. Mm -hmm. Be short of money means not have a lot of money. Significa que no tiene mucho dinero, ¿verdad? So Bill and Sue always stay at five-star hotels. They can't be short of money. Ah. No, no puede ser que les falte el dinero. Tienen pista. Very good. Thank you, Rodrigo. Number 11. Who wants to participate? Josué, please. Karen hasn't, hasn't left the office yet. She must be working late tonight. Karen hasn't left the office yet. She must be working late tonight. Okay, everybody. Very good. Very nice. We need to continue now, okay? I can see that you have understood this. Well, what about the next set of models? By the end of this class, participants will know and practice how to use models to express permission, obligation, and prohibition. It's easy, don't worry. Permission, uh, prohibition, and obligation. Now look at this. When we want to express permission, prohibition, and prohibition means not allowing something, obligation or no obligation, we use modal verbs. También podemos ocupar los modals precisamente para expresar todo eso. Cuando expresamos permiso, una prohibición, una obligación, o una no obligación. Cuando algo es una no obligación, significa que no es necesario. Si usted lo quiere hacer, bueno, no hay problema. Si no lo quiere hacer, también no hay problema. No hay ningún problema. Entonces es no obligation. Pero vamos a ver eso en detalle ahorita. Permission. Can. May. And could. Ya vimos todos estos, ¿verdad? Ahora vamos a verlos eh, para el caso de permiso. Can. Is most often used to ask for or give permission, but may and could are also possible, even though they are not used as often as can. Okay, so you can use can, you can also use may, and you can use could for permission. Examples Can I borrow a pen? Puedo tomar, ¿verdad? Un bolígrafo prestado, o me prestas un bolígrafo. Okay, está pidiendo permiso. Can I borrow a pen? Second example. You can sit here. The seat is free. Te puedes sentar aquí. El asiento está libre. Le está dando la oportunidad, le está dando permiso para sentarse. You can, you can sit here. The next one is, could I open the window? I am asking for permission. Estoy pidiendo permiso para abrir la ventana. Okay. Could I open the window? And the last one, may I ask a question? ¿Puedo hacer una pregunta? May I ask a question? If you notice, in the four examples, they use can, could, and may to ask for permission. Para quienes ya han estado en clases presenciales de inglés, ¿cómo le preguntan al profesor, al teacher o a la teacher si pueden ir al baño. ¿Cuál es la, la pregunta que por lo general se hace? Uh -huh. Sandra. May I go to the bathroom? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. May I go to the bathroom? Aunque en realidad es restroom, porque bathroom es donde uno se puede bañar también, ¿verdad? Pero en una escuela o en un instituto sería nada más restroom. Pero sí, may I go to the restroom? Así es. Al ocupar may, está pidiendo permiso. Está pidiendo una autorización. Ok. So that's the idea. Igualmente, podría preguntar, can I go to the restroom? Rodrigo wants to participate. 
Uh, I have a question. Sure. ¿Cómo se dice? Eh, go to the o go to, simplemente. Go to the, go to the restroom. Ir al baño. Mm -hmm. Así sería. May I go to the restroom or can I go to the restroom? Si quiero, si quiero decir, eh, si eh, puedo ir a la iglesia. Ah, ahí diría? no se ocupa. Go to church. ¿Por qué? ¿Por, por, por um, qué es la diferencia? En algunos casos tenemos algo que se llama collocations. Y eso significa que hay ciertas palabras que van juntas siempre. Y hay otras que no. Entonces, cuando hablamos de pedir permiso para ir al baño, decimos the restroom. Siempre va así. Normalmente cuando hablamos de la iglesia y con eso nos referimos a que vamos a ir ya sea a una misa o a un culto, etcétera, etcétera. Siempre se dice go to church. Ahora bien, si nos referimos a una iglesia en específico y nuestro interlocutor ya sabe a qué iglesia nos estamos refiriendo, entonces sí decimos the church. Por ejemplo, le podemos decir a alguien, mira, encontrémonos en la iglesia. Let's meet at the church. No le va a preguntar cuál iglesia. No, se supone que el interlocutor ya sabe a qué iglesia se refiere. A la que van siempre, probablemente. Entonces, en ese caso sí se puede decir the church. Pero si usted nada más quiere referirse al acto de ir a la ceremonia religiosa, entonces se dice únicamente church, go to church. Así es como funciona. No hay una regla general. No, no, no hay una regla general en este caso. Pero eh, sí hay una regla, digamos, no general, pero que sí eh, normaliza, digamos, esto. Aunque eso ya sería tema para otra lección. Pero cuando nosotros hablamos de algo bien específico, por lo general se utiliza the. Por darle un ejemplo. Quiero ver. Let's see. You say. I like pizza. En español decimos. Me gusta la pizza. Pero uno dice. ¿Y por qué no decimos. I like the pizza. ¿Por qué no? Porque estamos hablando de la pizza en general. So, Rodrigo, for example, do you like pizza? Do you like pizza, Rodrigo? Yes, I like pizza. Okay, good. Ahora, hablemos, digamos, de la pizza del pollo campero. Porque venden pizza también. Entonces, you say, I like the pizza. Uh, at pollo campero. Aquí es diferente. ¿Por qué ocupo the pizza? Porque estoy refiriéndome precisamente a la pizza que hacen ellos. No es cualquier pizza, es la pizza de ellos, la pizza que proviene de ahí. En ese caso, por eso se utiliza the. Cuando es específico. Cuando es específico. Cuando es general, desaparece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias. Bueno. Ok. Yes. Ok. I confused it. Oh, I don't have clear uh, between the bathroom and restroom. Ah. <laughs> ok. Bathroom. A bathroom is in your house. Yes. In your house. You can take a shower. If you have a bathtub, you can take a bath. And also you do number one and number two. Okay. But what about a restroom? A restroom is not in your house. A restroom is in a school. It's in public. Uh-huh, exactly. Uh, a restroom is at school, a university, at work, a restaurant, etc. In the restroom, you can take a shower, you can take a bath. The restroom is for number one and number two only. 
That's yeah. it. That's the difference. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So again, right, you use can, may, and could to ask for permission. Let's continue. We're going to do this exercise right here. Your turn, complete the following questions using the model in parentheses. Por el poco tiempo, vamos a tratar de hacerlo un poco más eh, espontáneo, ¿verdad? No vamos a ir a los breakout rooms. Vamos a cerrar esto. Okay, so complete the following questions using the model in parentheses. This exercise can be a little bit more difficult, but I want you to think very carefully so you can give me the right answer. I'm going to give you the first one as an example. You need help with your homework. You ask a friend. You school. ¿Cómo quedaría eso? Vamos a ver. Haciendo prueba. Le está preguntando. Veamos, Sandra. Hey, homework, please. Uh, can you repeat that, please? Could you help me with my homework, please? Let's see. That is correct. Very good, Sandra. Could you help me with my homework, please? Así es. Como es una pregunta, y vamos a regresar a esta diapositiva, acuérdense que el auxiliar va primero. Eso es muy importante. En la pregunta, el auxiliar va antes del sujeto. Como en el primer ejemplo, en el tercero y el cuarto. El segundo no es una pregunta, así que va a orden normal, sujeto, auxiliar y verbo. Pero en la pregunta va primero el auxiliar y luego el sujeto y luego el verbo. Can I borrow? Could I open? May I ask? Y como nos acaba de decir Sandra, en este caso, could you help me with my homework, please? Porque es una pregunta. Y todas son preguntas. Así que va a ir ese orden también. Thank you, Sandra. What about number two? You want to see your friend's stamp collection. You ask using can. Volunteer, please. Who wants to participate? Mm -hmm. Rodrigo. Can I see your stamp collection, please? That's right. Can I see your stamp collection, please? Correct. You are asking for permission to see the stamp collection. Very good. Number three, you want to open the window. You ask using can. Volunteer, please. Rodrigo, okay. Uh, well, we have uh, Nady and Zulma, but Rodrigo acaba de participar, así que le, ladies first, vamos a darle oportunidad a Nady, luego a Zulma, vamos. Nady, okay. number uh, three, please. You want to open the window, you ask. Um, can you, can you open the window? Can you open the window? No exactamente, porque si usted dice, can you open the window, le está pidiendo a la otra persona que lo haga, no le está pidiendo permiso, más bien es usted quien quiere abrir la ventana, como dice acá, you want to open the window, so you ask, can I open, can I open, uh -huh. can I open the window, uh -huh. Porque le está pidiendo permiso, autorización para hacerlo, ¿verdad? A lo mejor va en su carro. Como no es su carro, le va a preguntar, y mira, puedo abrir la ventana. Can I open the window? Okay, thank you. Uh, who wanted to participate? Era la otra chica que quería participar. Se me olvidó. Zulma. Zulma, I believe. Zulma, right? Okay. Zulma, do you want to try... Answering number four, you want your friend to turn off the TV. You ask, okay? En este caso, si es un favor. You want your friend to turn off the TV. You ask. Or who wants to participate? It's open. Rodrigo. Could you uh, turn off the TV, please? 
could you turn off the TV, please? That is correct. Very good. Maritza wants to participate. What about number five, Maritza? You want to take a cookie. You ask your friend using May. May I take him a cookie? May I take a cookie? That is right. May I take a cookie? Good. Very good. What about number six? Volunteer, please. Number six. A todos al mismo tiempo. <laughs> okay, Rodrigo, let's do it. You Can want you? your friend to, sorry, uh, I'm going to read it. You want your friend to close the door for you. You ask. Can you close the door, please? Can you close the door? For me, please. Very good. Very good. Uh, thank you. What about number seven? You want to use your friend's bathroom. I see a bathroom porque está en la casa de él. Okay, so uh, you want to use your friend's bathroom. So you ask, volunteer. Mm -hmm. Vamos, hay, hay voces que nunca escucho. Quiero escuchar esas voces también. Sin pena. Sin miedo al éxito. Ajá. No, not today. Volunteer, please. Rodrigo. Rodrigo May I, ha venido con todo, miren. Ajá. May I use your bathroom? Okay. May I use your bathroom? That's right. Very good. Thank you, Rodrigo. And number eight, you want a ride to the airport. You ask your friend. Otro favor. Uh -huh. You ask your friend. Sandra. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a ride to the airport? Can you give me a ride to the airport? That is correct. Very good. Very good. Okay. De ahí viene la expresión, ¿verdad? Cuando alguien le dice, hey, dame ride, dame ride. Okay. De ahí viene, del inglés, give a ride. Que sería dar un aventón, ¿verdad? Muchas veces no sabemos, pero ocupamos varias expresiones que provienen del inglés. Por ejemplo, en El Salvador... Nadie dice atrapar. Nadie dice atrapar, pero nadie, nadie. ¿Cómo decimos acá? Cachar. Cachar, ajá, que viene de catch en inglés, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Dice, mira, este teléfono que me compré, guachá, guachá, ok, que viene de watch. También, ¿verdad? Así que también está chequear, que sería revisar, viene de check and so on. So, uh, let's take a look. We're almost done here. Ya casi, casi que terminamos. Solo déjenme revisar esto aquí. Mm -hmm. Very good. We still have some material. Okay, so everybody, um, before we finish this, I have to ask you, do you have any questions about the platform, the exercises in the platform? No questions? Teacher. Yes. It's tomorrow hard class. Tomorrow. Okay, yeah. listen. Um, I think so. Yo digo que sí. <laughs> Porque hasta ahorita no hemos tenido ninguna, digamos, indicación que indique lo contrario. Así que mm -hmm. yo diría que sí, sobre todo porque por decreto legislativo el, el viernes pasado íbamos a tener clase, pero no tuvimos. Entonces, yo diría que sí, mañana habría clase, pero igual, lo mismo que les dije la vez anterior, les invito a permanecer pendientes del chat en sí. WhatsApp, porque si hay algún cambio o algo que les tenga que avisar, si de pronto no hay clase, ahí yo les voy a decir, miren, no se conecten porque no hay clase, pero por lo pronto eh, hagamos de cuenta que sí va a haber por lo pronto, 
porque vamos una clase atrasados por, por eso del, del viernes anterior, ¿verdad? Que se decretó que no iba a haber clase. Entonces, eh, yo diría que sí. Les había dicho yo hace como al principio de la semana que yo pensaba que íbamos a tener clase los dos viernes de esta, de esta semana y la siguiente, pero no, fue un mal cálculo de mi parte. Solamente sería mañana. Eh, la siguiente semana sería de lunes a jueves. Primero Dios, si no pasa otra cosa. <ríe> eh, sería de esa forma, ¿verdad? Así que... Contemos con que mañana sí hay clase y en caso que llegue a surgir algo que indique lo contrario, yo les voy a avisar por ahí. ¿Ok? All right. Así que, please, I want you to work on the platform. It's over here. Give me a moment. Let me check. Está cargando. No sale nada. <laughs> Sorry, my computer is very slow. Okay, there it is. Now close this. Okay, take a look. Everybody. Uh, please work on the exercises from section four. Ya casi, casi, casi que sería de irlos terminando. Más o menos hasta el 4.8. Hasta ahí tendríamos que ir todos ya. Y ya mañana terminamos esta unidad para que podamos completar el resto de ejercicios que sería 4.9 y el 4.10, que es un listening exercise, ¿verdad? Por si no lo han hecho todavía, todavía tenemos hasta mañana. Ok, we're going to finish here. It's nine and three. So everybody, thank you for your time. Thank you for your participation. And uh, thank you for being here. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.